Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about symbiosis. You have a foldable that looks something like this. It is probably green, so let's get going. If you look along the fold of your foldable on the edge where the fold is, that's the first blank that you have. So symbiosis is a close relation is a close and often long-term interaction between two different biological species. So think about the movie Finding Nemo. Okay, you know, Nemo and his dad lived in the sea anemone. That's a relationship. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind so you can kind of understand the relationship between two different living organisms. All right, mutualism is the first relationship. So on the front cover there, you have the word mutualism, then you have a parentheses. Okay, fill that in with positive and a positive. A mutualistic relationship is a relationship in which both organisms benefit. So organism one is happy and organism two is also happy. So it's a positive for both organisms involved. Inside your foldable, you're asked to list some examples, so just make sure that you do that. You're asked for three, and all you have to do, guys, is write down the names of the organisms. I don't need anything too detailed. Just make sure you write down the names of the organisms, period. All right, first thing is the hummingbird, moth, and the flower. This is a mutualistic relationship, so let's see how. This is examples that you will kind of see when we're doing practice for this. So the hummingbird moth is drinking the nectar of the flower. So, hmm, hummingbird gets food, nutrients, animals like food, just like we do. The flower gets pollinated. Okay, that's something that the flower needs to survive. And the moth brings pollen from other flowers, and the moth gets a tasty meal. So, the flower gets pollinated, the moth gets food. Plus, plus for both. All right, second thing is going to be the race and the batfish. Okay, so it says, can you see the two cleaner races are removing parasites from the batfish? So, that's right in here. Okay, one of the races has entered the gill slit of the batfish and may even enter its mouth in search of food. The batfish gets a bath and the race gets a meal. So, one gets clean, one gets food. It's a plus plus for all. I don't know who doesn't want to be clean and who doesn't want to get food, but it's a plus plus for everybody. All right, your last example is going to be your antelope and the oxbird. So let's examine this. The oxbird hangs out on the antelope and gets a delicious meal, hmm, food again, of bugs living on the antelope, and the antelope gets rid of parasites. So something that you need to know is that parasites are things that cause harm to another organism. So if something is going to eat the parasites off of that organism, then it's a win-win. So the antelope and the oxbird, mutualistic relationship, it's a positive for both. All right, commensalism. This, on the back, back to the front cover, it's a positive for one and neutral or a zero for the other one. So when you go on the inside, it's a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is not harmed or benefited from the relationship. So one is, eh, they're okay. They're neutral. They're neither harmed nor benefited. The other one is hunky-dory. So let's look at some examples. All right, let's look at the cattle and the cattle egrets. As these cattle walk around eating grass, they stir up lots of insects. The egrets hang around and get a yummy meal of insects. So these are the cattle and the egrets are these little birds here. So as the cattle walk around, the insects are lifted up out of the ground because of course the cattle are kind of heavy and so they're causing the insects to come up out of ground and so the cattle egrets are able to get all the little insects that pop up around here so they get food but what happens to the cattle nothing nothing negative happens to them nor nothing positive they just keep living their life that's a commensalistic relationship all right back to finding nemo Okay, you got the clownfish and the sea anemone. The clownfish swims in the sea anemone and gets protection. That's a positive for the clownfish since its predators will get stung. The sea anemone is unaffected. The clownfish doesn't do anything great for the sea anemone, nor does it do anything negative. So that's commensalistic. 
Okay, my third example is my shark and the remore. The remore which is this right here, attaches itself to the shark and saves energy since it doesn't have to swim. Doesn't have to swim. So let's think about it. Who would love to be lazy and not have to do anything? Well, the remore. The remore gets to attach itself to the shark and they don't have to swim. They use no energy. And it gets to snack on anything that the shark kills. So the shark doesn't get anything from this relationship. The shark is just doing what it's been doing. And the remore gets to benefit from it. Remore is the positive. The shark is the neutral. All right. Third thing, back to the front of your foldable. Parasitism. One is positive and one is negative. Okay. So it's a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is harmed. Okay. So one has a negative and the other is a positive. All right, so let's look at this. We have the acacia plant and ants. The ants lay eggs on the acacia tree so they get a nice safe place for their eggs. The acacia covers the infected area with a brown flesh called a gall. The plant has to use valuable resources to create the gall. Okay, so Let's think about who gets the positive here. The ant lays eggs on the acacia tree so they have a nice safe place for their eggs. So hmm, I think the ants are definitely going to be your positive there. Okay. Now, the acacia plant, it says, covers the infected area with a brown flesh called a gall. The plant uses valuable resources to create the gall. That's telling me that they have a negative. They're using something that's valuable, something that's important. They're using energy for the ants to be able to populate. All right, this is one of my favorites, the Loa Loa worm and the human. And this is real, y'all. Okay, so this worm infects hum the human bloodstream and gets a nice, warm, safe home there. The human may go blind or have other complications as a result. So if you look very carefully right here, this is the Loa Loa worm. Okay, so it's using the blood to have energy. So it's feeding off of human blood from the eye. Okay, so the lower lower worm is the positive in here. The negative, unfortunately, is going to be the human because the human is losing blood. That's something that we need to live our life. That's a negative for us. Another very common one that they like to use is the mosquito and the human. Okay, and I bet you already know which one's the negative and the positive. Yep, I bet you already guessed it. The mosquito gets the positive because they suck on the blood from the human or other organisms, and the human has the negative. Okay, the mosquito gets energy, they get food, and the human gets the negative. Okay. Now, I know a lot of times in you guys' mind, y'all think, okay, when people compete, somebody's always the winner. Well, not necessarily. In competition, they're both going to be negative. So let's talk about why. Organisms compete, organisms compete for the same resources. So example, two tigers competing over a female. That's a negative. When you fight, people are going to get injured or organisms get injured. Even though you may have a winner, there's still something negative that happens for both. No one comes out unscathed. Okay. So the two tigers is going to be my first example. All right. Then we could talk about two different organisms fighting over an acorn. It's a negative for both. Two things are going to get injured. And then the third one is going to be male zebras fight to defend their territory. So anything that fights over resources is going to be competition. It's a negative for any organism involved. And then the last one, again, on that front cover is going to be predation. One's positive and one is negative. It's one organism hunts, which is your predator, and the other one is hunted, which is your prey. Okay, so let's look at our three examples on the inside. First example, the lioness hunting and killing zebras. Okay, so let's see who is the positive. Well, it's definitely going to be the lioness. And who's the negative? Well, this dead zebra over here. Mm. Not looking too good. So sad. Sad face. Okay. Sample number two. Bears hunting for fish. Well, who has the positive? Up oh, bear. He gets energy. He gets food. Negative. Poor little sad dead fish. Eh, his family will cry. And then my third one. 
the snake hunting a rat to eat. Okay, well, who's going to be happy? Mr. Snake is definitely really excited. He gets energy. He gets food. Who is sad? I'm dying. Little rat. Okay, very, very sad. And that's it. Make sure you got all your notes. And make sure you read the board if you're in class. Ta-ta for now.